Mari e more na tata kato e mataki taki mai ana i te pāwhu tu poro mai te awa mutu i te rohe o Waikato he piko he tani fa he piko he tani fa a warm welcome to everybody in their homes across Aotearoa New Zealand at this our Easter weekend as we bring you the 2022 Bunnings Homegrown Touch Series t- taking us right back to our grassroots here in Te Awa Mutu on a beautiful sunny day here never get a drop of rain in Te Awa Mutu a warm welcome to everybody watching at home. My name's Shane Edwards. Joining me in the commentary team today, one of Ahipata's favourite sons, Mr. Peter Walters, a.k.a. Mr. Touch, and joined by one of our leading Touch officials, Taranaki's finest young man in Harley Wall. Peter, good morning. Tēnā koe matua, Shane. It's a great morning here in Te Awamutu. Uh, tēnā koutou e te whānau. And um, it's going to look, looking forward to these games. We're starting off with the women, and um, obviously uh, Te Hautonga women's in the green, and the Hauraki women's in the blue. Thank you, Pete. And Harley, let's pass over to you for an introduction and introduce our, our officials for today's game, and then we'll cut back to you, Pete. Tēnā kōrua o tira, tēnā koutou katoa e, mat- e mātakitaki mai ana. Yeah, really excited for today's game. It's going to be an awesome opportunity. Um, our three officials for today's first game in the women's is uh, Brett Kimpton, we've got Shay Spive, and Sonia Wirihana. Kia ora. Thank you, Harley. Peter, how about an introduction to our two teams taking the field today? Yes, so we'll start off with our Te, Hau, te Hauraki women's. And uh, number one, Armani Shepard. Number two, Leanna Marshall-Barton. Number three, Rebecca Tamati. Number four, Brooke McElwee. Number five, Rhys Anderson. Six, Jasmine Munro. Number seven, and co-captain Charlie Foster. Number eight, Zoe Sausage. Number, no- number nine, Alicia McCoy. Number 10, Imogen Edmonds, Langi Town. Number 11, Samantha Taylor. Right, Number 12, Leila Iremia. 13, and co captain Mary Iremia Allen. 14, Brian Hadfield. And 15, Michaela Hecker. Coached by Latoya Tainu McIntyre. Manager Shelley Johnston. And mentor Jessica Ma. No, he peaked. Not long away now, Farno, from the start of our very, very first game. Let's go to the Hotonga. For our green team, the Hotonga women's number one. Arurangi Tauranga, number two, Highland Potts, number three, Claudia Hannum, number four, Ruhia Tamati, number five, Cody Tote, number six, and co-captain Jamie Colossi. Okay, we just need to throw out to the break right now, team. You got to... Get to Jamie Colossi. Karen, get out there, get your deck sorted. Weathering will take its toll, so you have to protect it. The feeling of accomplishment you get, second to none. So yeah, long weekends are awesome for doing that kind of stuff. Decking oil, just $88. 2030 PSI Water Blaster, only $119. Decking applicator with handle, just $21.50. Where you find a competitor's lower price on the same stocked item, we'll beat it by 15%. Lowest prices are just the beginning. My name is Joseph Sawali. To stay fast on my feet, I need a lightweight and responsive boot. Step up your game with the ASICS Menace. It's lightweight and responsive, which allows for rapid acceleration and a faster transfer through directional changes. The innovative HD 10mm technology raises the heel and reduces strain on the legs. Raise your game, play uplifted. We're going to carry on with that team list. We talked about Jamie Colossi as the co-captain number six for Te Tonga. Number seven, Visinia Mahutariki Fakalelu. Number eight, Savannah Asafota Vita. Number nine, Linnea Karina. Number 10, Caitlin McIntosh. Number 12, and co-captain Aria Tainu McIntyre. Number 13, Ora Williams. Number 14, Elena Iremia. And number 15, Mariana Tavita. And 16, Kairirangi Edmonds. Tapping off in the game now, Fano with the Ho Tonga tapping off, going from left to right as you see it on the screen. Okay, so here we have um, Te Hauraki Women's set play there. Yeah, and a nice shutdown strike from the number four for um, Te Hau Tonga. And that was Ruhia Tamati. Hauraki, uh, Te Hauraki on attack again, seven metres out. Yeah, they ran a, uh, a cookie platform there, and they had a block runner happening. They got a penalty there for an offside call, so 
Talk to me about that, please, Harley. What was the referee saying there? So we've got a penalty for offside. What we want to see from the players in this part of the, f- the field is we want them to be going forward from the line. If you could watch closely, um, just have to see how hard the link has to work to get all the way back to the line so that they can move back forward again, which is what the referee's asking there. Yes, it's a big uh, change with the new seven-metre rule. And uh, teams, even at this stage, it's been implemented a couple of years, still making that adjustment from five to seven. The Hodaki on appeal. Nice pop into space there. Turn over here. And Te Ho Tonga will bring it off their line. We just talked about the uh, referee spotting out the number four there, Ruhia Tamati. Uh, you notice how quickly she was to respond to the referee. She did a really good job of, of completing her role in that set there. And Te Ho Tonga working through this middle third now with subbing transition. We've got their fresh players on. A little bit, bit of dew on the ground, Pete. How do they adjust to cope with the dew? Oh, yeah, just look, it's just knowing what your footing is. It's just They just want to play first and see how they uh, work with their footwork and any dew that is out there and just take it from there. Te Hauraki now working forward, going towards their sub box. Harley, this is always an interesting area. There's lots of times in this, around this third, fourth touch in the middle third where you may get seven, eight, nine players on. <laughs> How do they deal with that? So the tricky part for the referee team is not only are the players interchanging on and off the field, but so were the referees. You just missed it out of shot, but we had an interchange there with the referee, so they have to stay on the on their toes just to make sure that they're keeping up with play, and we have an awesome result there from uh, Te Hauraki. Beautiful drive there, and a lovely pass from Reese Anderson off, off her right to left, right over to Alicia McCoy. Alicia McCoy in her spare time, milks cows, 220 cows a morning. Yeah, it was a great put down. She got it down quickly. Defender was right there, so good try for Tehoraki. And Tehoraki leave 1 0 in this, the Bunnings homegrown touch series. What I like to see already in the game is there's a lot of noise in the sub box and on the field. You can hear the communication, and it's a really important part of the game. Uh, and it's really awesome to see that the girls are communicating so well on the field. Nice 33 peel there, Pete. What are you looking for when you're setting up for a 33 peel? What's some of the technical aspects? Yeah, well, it's, it's timing and positioning. You know, where do you start from? The timing of your run in relation to the, the primary player with the ball. Another young Itamir there at half. Just turned 16 years of age. A lot of our young players at school. Beautiful pass to our winger. Yes, Elena Itamir there on the scoop, having to use her vision decision there. Getting that pass away under pressure. Through the hands. Throws off here, and another quick pass. And there it is on the Indomie replay. Well done. And we're at one all. Uh, I do notice at this early stage that there are a lot of touches um, from the attacker not being made. They're waiting to get touched. They need to get their arm out there and get the ball down. It is a lot harder when it's on the wrong side of their body because most of them are right-handed, but it's a skill that needs to uh, be worked on at this level. They're running that 33 platform, Pete, and sending a, a, a silent person out the back there. Yeah, they're running that block runner in the back door out the back. It uh, looks like that's the um, they set play for this for this moment in time. This point here for the transition uh, for Te Hautonga, I think, is really important. If they can get some really good yardage up the field, they're going to be able to make a good impact in this game. How important is it to have that dummy half in there, Pete? And what are you looking for from that dummy half? Well, it's very important. Normally when teams go to their sub box on the uh, transition, the winger is normally the dummy half, so it's a skill that has to be trained, especially with the wingers. So they've, they've run it hundreds of times, and they're very proficient at it. What's the ref going to call here? He's given it to Vaisina. Vaisina also the recipient of the um, scholarship. For, yes, she's going to go through. Oh, Highland Potts on the Pots run. On the scoop. Looking for Vaisina. She had a bit of time there to look. And there, the yes. defender got on it. And Vaisina is the recipient of the Tanya Dalton Scholarship. So those girls obviously both coming from the Waikato. How important do you think it is that there's some connections that have already been established? Yes, I think it's very important. I mean, uh, generally coaches will put them in pods. And um, those pods in relation to the familiarity of the players and the time they spent together. 
The teams have had only one day together coming into camp yesterday, spent a whole day training and um, putting it out on the field today in this, the home grown, the Bunnings homegrown series. Yes, so we can imagine it'll be a little bit disjointed in, the, in, in, in fact in this whole first game as they get familiar with the combinations and the pods that they're working with and um, they will progress and get better throughout the course of the series. He tried to work through on an offside call. It was on to throw the pass, but the, you know that's some of that vision decision we talked about. And obviously the scoop worked on the last play that they scored off, so they're looking to continue on with moves that seem to work for them. A nice check off there from Anderson to Amani Shepard as to Hodaki bring it down through the field. What's the ref seen there, Harley? Looks like a little bobble on the pickup, I think. Even though uh, we're a few minutes into the game, I've actually been really impressed at how good the ball handling's been so far. Yes, and I noticed there with the the blue team to Hauraki, they did have uh, seven on, so they're going to have to get used to that, and the rest will be looking to pick this up if they uh, stay with those habits of not having a cleaner subbing transition. Yeah, and in, in terms of managing that, a lot of it comes down to the sideline referee, where they're positioned, talking to the, uh, the team as they enter and exit the field. They've seen her on the sweep. Great diving effort in the corner, touch made by Blue, by Alicia McCoy. Yeah, Claudia had him on the wing there for Te Tonga. She's an experienced uh, exponent. Mm. The Hodaki got a lot of sideways movement trying to get it up the field here. That's a great run through the middle there, getting some powerful yards. Te Tonga on the retreat now as Te Hodaki drive forward. Yeah, I like run, the momentum here. Running at a retreating defence. Yeah, that was a really good set. They went down. There was no downtime. The ball was down. It was up. They had good forward momentum. And subsequently, they pull a penalty for a repeat set. We had an offside call there. It looks like uh, Te Hautonga were struggling just to make that seven metres. It'll be interesting to watch that as the game progresses. Obviously, there hasn't been a whole lot of elite touch this year. We'll see what impact, uh, I guess, a lack of playing time will have on this game. And I see Te Hautonga there. They're running a mad dog. Uh, defence where they get a uh, point middle up and they get the opposite link up. You can see them lifting high there. Yeah, good defence. Great lift there from Link. This area of the field with the defence, you, you drop and you lift, you drop and you lift is very crucial. It looks like we may have another offside penalty. We'll just check with what the referee's decision was. Again, as, as we mentioned before, it looks like it's really hard work out there for our, our players from Te Taitunga to make it all the way, oh, sorry, Te Hautunga to make it all the way back onside. And Harley, that looks like, the, would that be their second penalty so they can't afford to give one more if they lose a player, is that correct? That's correct, yeah, we'll have to look out for that. We want to see, well, what's the referee here? He's going to ask those middles to get all the way forward to make sure that they're being compliant. Oh, what's our call here? Yeah, that was a good shutdown by the strike middle who was in the pocket. They, uh, that, was, that was really good. She got off the line. It was a nice V-line towards where the ball was. And she made the touch before the attacker got it down. Shepard with the ball on Karina. And they've mirrored up on that short side. Harley, that uh, three penalty rule, uh, which player would have to leave the field if a third penalty was given? After the third penalty, it's the player that the referee is penalising will be the player that goes to the side. So the referee has a responsibility to communicate which player it is that they're penalising in that situation. Anderson again on that long ball, loving that right to left pass thrown over the top. Well marked on that far right side by... The Te Hautonga winger. And Te Hauraki there running that 33 platform again. They've, they've run it three or four times now. Great vision by Vecina there, passing back to her box side, pulling a prominent middle up. Kaurirangi Edmonds a little bit, bit casual coming through the middle of the field. I think they'll want to be hitting those yards a little bit harder as the players are entering the field. As Te Hautonga get into a better striking position now, playing with two middles. Uh, Ramir, nice pass to Arorangi. Well done, Alicia McCoy shuts in on the link and took out a threatening position there. Working those two middles, Pete. Yeah, from a attacking perspective, they, they could have got that pass away and, and they you know, would have got profit from it. Here's some really good drives here from uh, Te Hauraki. 
How important is it to stay square at those touches, Pete? Well, you always want to be square. They're running a lot of snaky runs where they move away from the players. Oh, that was a heavy touch right there. Yeah, and an easy call there for the referee. As we expect the players to make a, a touch with minimum force. And in this situation, it looked like it might have been a little bit too heavy. You can see that uh, as the, the attacking players coming in, that the, the, I guess the point of force is quite high up. And so, therefore, the play with the ball in hand uh, lost their momentum there. Te Hautunga find themselves back on their defensive seven. Nice, strong touch there. Nice, strong touch, stopping the momentum and stopping the... To Hauraki getting a dynamic split away. Yes, that link, uh, that winger, sorry, got up high, and um, she she got her on a on a reach back. To really on, good defense. on the sweep again. Oh, it looks like we might have a forward pass from the ruck call here by our referee. Some sharp eyes out there on the field. I mm. think I missed that one myself. Perhaps some fatigue starting to set in. We're 12 minutes into the game now. This would, be, would have been some of the, you know, fastest touch that they would have played all year. Yes, and the, once again, it's that familiarity of, of getting used to, fi to finding combinations and, you know, who's driving it. There are comms between each player. I'm driving. I've got your dummy half. I'll pick you up. So, uh, you know, need, need a little bit more comms there. A lot of free ball play. Oh, outstanding. Is that Jamie Colossi? What are we calling here? So it looks like we might be going back for a forward pass, perhaps? Or oh, I think it might have been a touch call for the sixth touch. The sixth touch, yeah. Great play by Jamie Colossi, playing to the referee's call. It was a great dive by the defender to make that touch. It was full extension. The fatigue, totally understandable. A lot of touch hasn't been played this summer, so hats off to Touch New Zealand for running this event. Yeah, it looked like a loose carry there. Um, yeah. She needed to protect the ball a little bit better than that. Lost it on the, on the first or second drive. This could prove costly. How long are our halves this game, uh, Harley? So as we would play at a national tournament or an event this level, with 20-minute halves with a two-minute half time, or three-minute half time, I should say. Take us through this touchdown here, Pete. Yeah, great vision there by Jamie Colossi, the cap, one of the co-captains. Um, she ran, she saw, she saw the defender move, sold the dummy, went through and put the ball down. It was a 32 peel initially. She comes around here, she runs, she has a look for the three on two, sells the dummy and scores. Looking great there on the Indomie replay. Nice deep pocket off that peel. I've been really impressed with Ruhia Tamati so far. She was the one that helped set up Jamie Colossi for that try. I think she's one to look out for in this series. To Tai Tonga take the lead, 3-1. Six minutes to go in this half. Another sweep by Eremia Allen. Long pass. Yeah. Touch made. Great defence. They were channeling well and they were they held. They read the play. It was really good defence there. How important is it to, to call your touches and appeal your touches, Peter, at this position? Oh, hugely, especially down in this area here where it's the difference between scoring a, a try or not scoring a try. They'll have to watch that Anderson. She's thrown right to left a number of times looking for that winger. Joe Tonga working forward. They go to the middle of the field. They sweep their link round. Zanaya Karina brings it back. Nice little train there between the winger and the link. Looking for that extra pass. I like the way the left side defending uh, for Te Hauraki are really up in their face when the ball is close to the sub box. It's really limiting the amount of metres that the uh, Te Hautonga team can, can make going forward. Looks like she just lost her footing there and, and so bobbled the ball. So now we'll have Te Hauraki coming back with the ball the other way. Important to be strong in the ruck, Pete. Yes, and Te, te Hauraki have been, um, they've been more cleaner and, and have shown more skill than Green at this point in, in stage than Te Hautonga. Um, and they've pulled a few penalties because of it. They drive hard, they snaky run. They have good Lovely momentum. Dummy. Lovely dummy half work there by Te Hauraki. Yeah, that oh, was a lovely touchdown. Talk us through this on the Indomie replay, Pete. Yeah, well, once again, we talked about their momentum going forward from one end to the other, and this was a prime example of it. They started from down on their own line. They worked forward with momentum, no overruns, all the skills being portrayed there. They run a beautiful little uh, split play. The link runs a chop line, and the pass gives it, and they score for that link running that chop line. Here we go here, beautiful pass. She gets it done. Well done. The Hotunga still lead 3-2 in this, the 2022 Bunnings Homegrown Touch Series. 
I'm really wrapped with the kids in here. There's so many young girls in here. A couple of 15-year-olds and, you know, young ones from our uh, youth, youth and um, junior program. It's really exciting for the future. All goes really well for the next World Cup and probably for some of these players could see themselves playing three World Cups. Nothing beats experience at that top level, Pete. That's for sure, and they're certainly going to be gaining it this weekend. Nice strike by the um, link on that occasion. It was a blind strike, which is a really good defensive tactic. Teho Tonga trying to pull Teho Raki out from that line, get them out in that uncomfortable space. It's planted on the seven. Long ball over the top, right to left. What are we going to have here? Oh, it looks like a forward pass has been called. In that position, you can see that the two referees were working together to determine the flight of the pass. And it looks like our sideline referee is now on the field, uh, has given the signal to the referee that that was a forward pass. Yes, good communication by the refs. And... Okay, here we, here we are again to Hauraki. Every set, they seem to have gone down the other end. They use that checkoff pass well. They snaky run here, looking to pass off and make more metres. Great work by Rumia Allen there, showing the ball, carrying it in two hands, faking this way and that way, creating confusion in the defence. Anderson on the run. Out to Udemir again, Leela. Just looking for a drop on the 22, on the 7. Well done, Jamie. Jamie getting very prominent, Jamie Colossi getting very prominent off the line, Pete, taking steps off that line in defence. Yes, for sure. The Hotonga here, working to their sub box. Jamie Glossy herself quite young, even though she's already had experience at a World Cup level in 2019. Yeah, she's certainly one of the um, players who will be dominating in the series with her experience and, and, and skill set. Really impressed with the skill set. Irimia puts on the pace for the burner. Wow. There she is, 16-year-old Elena Irimia. Yeah, the defenders were right on her there, but she just kept confident. She just kept moving fast, and, uh, and the touches were missed there. So well done, Elena. All those Saturday morning trainings with her track crew out there at Pirate Stadium, helping with her pace there. Lovely passing skills by Teho Tonga. Really impressed with the quality of skills of these ladies. Yeah, she's selling dummies the whole time to making, making people think and hesitate. A great try. Great dive. Way to lose some skin. What we also like to see at this level is the honesty. Obviously, Armani Shepard did her very best to try and make that touch, but she knew she didn't make it. She didn't claim it either. To Hauraki here. We're running a sweet play here. Oh, uh, touch wasn't made there. She pulled out of that. Let's see what they set up for now. Same play. Pots on the touch. Dummy half scoops. Um, chop line there. It was on over the top, but it's not an easy one to throw left to right 20 metres. Ladies will be looking forward to a break in another minute and a half. Yeah, to Hotong have certainly got their tails up in this uh, spell right now. Their momentum is a lot better. There's less downtime. Lovely checking. Checking back and forward, trusting their skills. Beautiful ball movement. Set for 33 platform. We've got a scoop. What type of conversations happening between the referee and the players in that position there, Harley? Trying to keep the game flowing and keep people on side. What's, what's that look like? Yeah, what's really important as the set or as the ball comes down the field is that the referee is continually talking to the players so that the players can respond and get all the way on side every time. Oh, it looks like we had a touch call. I thought that was a close one there. So yeah. that when we get down to the end of the field, the players are more respondent and we can have more tries and less penalties. Yeah, that was a good attempt by uh, Vesenia there. And she, she tends to have a lot of quickies. She's, she's quite a powerful girl. And she's not trying to dive and have a quickie. She's got that dynamic strength, eh, Pete? Yeah, lots of power. Yeah, nice play there. The fake quickie looked like a, um, you know, they're, they're running a sequence there. So they have a couple of quickies and everyone comes in tight for the defense and they bounce the link out. It's a good sequence. Sweep of play here. Thinks the play through there. Yeah, it looks like an advantage call from the referee that the uh, our defender from uh, Te Hauraki was just short of the line. They gave that advantage, and Jamie Clossy scores for a try just before half time. She's been a good half so so far, guys. A lot of tries. 
A lot of tries, a lot of skills. In that situation there, Harley, um, the advantage play, talk us through that. So the responsibility for the defender, get all the way to the try line uh, to give the advantage to the attacking team to make the most of that opportunity. Well done, and Te Hautunga lead at half-time, 5-2, in splendid conditions here in Te Aumutu. Uh, this event brought to you by Bunnings, Indomie, Bartercard, Essex, SAS Sport, and Silver Ford Firm, proud event sponsors. What's that scoreline there, boys? I don't, I don't actually know, but there's certainly a lot of tries going on. 5-2 Te Hautunga up now. 5-2 Te Hautunga. I'd like to just see that a big shout out to our event management team, event manager Guy Barton, tournament manager Guy Barton, ground announcer Pat Spellman, our own Very Harley Wallers, our ground manager, communications Tessa Blakelock and Jackson Miller. Live streaming proudly brought to you by the Stream Shop. Uh, high performance manager of this program is Miss Pam Hyde. Tony Wall is our men's manager, mix manager Rachel Stratford and the women's team manager Shelley Johnson. So, Shana, what's your thoughts um, with the um, Te Hauraki Blue team? What do they need to do to get back into this contest? Yeah, I, I think um, that we just they've got a lot on their, on their attack line, Pete. Uh, just not coming off. They've tried a few over the top and getting, getting through um, on that left side. They might want to set a stronger 33 platform and try a couple up the middle there, I think, just to vary their play. Their wing, uh, the Hautonga wingers have now realised that those balls going wide and they're starting to mirror up on those sides. So maybe there's a little bit of space opening up in that middle. Yeah, I agree, Shane. And also there, uh, when they're striking, whether it be at a dummy half or the primary and first pass off the ball, I feel there needs to be a bit more engagement with the defence because they're sort of throwing early over the top and then the defence just tending to drift out and they've shut down a few plays there. So be interesting what they... Uh, what um, uh, Latoya, who is the coach, uh, comes up with in the this, in this second half to get, get her team back into the game. Uh, up against her dad, obviously, Peter McIntyre, coach of the other team. The girls doing incredibly well after only one day together. You wouldn't, you wouldn't um, think that they'd been together only one day with some of the combinations they're showing. Uh, the crisp passness, passes and working together. Knowing that many of these players come from one of our 19 provinces across New Zealand, getting together in one day and, and combining like this. Fabulous spectacle in such a short time as we head into the second half of an exciting game here in Te Awamutu. Crowds yes. building up here. Yes, and there's been, uh, looking at the uh, Te Hautunga team, there's been some good performers this first half. Obviously one of the co-captains, Jamie Colossi. Um, Elena Itamir, she's, she's gone really well. And Highland Potts has gone well as well. Harley, talk to me about that half-time. Uh, who's allowed to approach a referee at half-time if they want to question something to have a discussion and, and talk to a referee? Who can do that? At Nationals, and also at this level, we want to allow the referees to have as much time to debrief as they can. So within that three-minute half-time break, it's only in that last minute can the captain of the team approach the, the referee for any quarter door. No coaches allowed, no managers allowed. No coaches, no managers, definitely no one from the sideline. Thank you, Harley. As Hotonga comes straight on to attack, leading this game 5-2, and to Hauraki will be on defence again. Vey on the 33 peel. Nice touch there on the line, getting back quickly. Highland Potts in at dummy half, giving instructions to Vey. They'll set for a 33 platform here. Taking it across to 32, Highland Potts on the peel, on the sweep. Looking for a dive. Oh, draws the winger. What's the referee going to say? Yeah, looks like they got that pass away and the ball's down. Let's have a look on the Indomie replay. Claudia Hannum there scoring that try. Talk us through this, Pete. Yep, so they run a uh, sweep play here. Potts comes around. She has a look. She passes off. It was a good, good draw pass. He held it right up into the point just before touch and pass. I think what stands out to me defensively is that the, the link wasn't quite sure what was going on and she couldn't commit to making a decision. And it opened up that opportunity for Taho Tonga there. Yes, and it looked like if the, if the winger would got another step forward and on her left, she might have got her on a reach back touch or at least blocked the passing lane. Taho will be wanting to score next with the score starting to build 6-2. Reese Anderson and Amani Shepard. Amani Shepard at dummy half. Another one still at school. Reese just at university first year. Into Layla. Layla, dummies Layla. Well done. Anderson at dummy half. Off to Layla. Leela Irimia. 
and handover. What do you want to see on those last touches, Pete? I still would have had a crack there, Shana. I wouldn't have just died with it in the corner. I would have at least passed one in, maybe a step back. But put, put a little bit of pressure on because you just don't know. Sometimes you can get another set of six if they knock the ball forward, put their hand in the way of a pass, yes. get a pull of penalty. There's Aura Williams there coming on. They pull a penalty. Not too sure what that was for, Harley. Yeah, it looked like a heavy touch again. Again, I think that the girls are coming in quite heavy and quite high. Um, just to try and make some impact defensively to slow down the attacking team. Again, looking to stay square at the touch. So important, Pete, to be square at the touch. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, is that a fire siren in the background? <laughs> yeah, not half time. I've already had that. <laughs> That's how we do it in Te Pete. <laughs> yes. Okay, Te Tonga here on attack. Here's Aura Williams there. 33 platform bringing a sweep around. Yes, sweep of play. Gets a right middle from Te Hauraki. Long ball That's again. A nice long ball. Well done. Was that Anderson again? Who That's threw that? Nice Let's have a look. Ball. Tell me who threw that, Harley. Here comes to the Indomi replay. Let's have another look. Itamia in. No. Beautiful pass right to left. Oh, that was Savannah Savannah asked for to Vita. Yes. Well done, Savannah. Well done, Lovely right to left. Working hard. Great vision decision. Yes, it's not easy to throw those ones. You've got to, you've got to hit the target. You're taking the defense into account as well. So well done. Pete, situations like this where you find yourself on the scoreboard falling behind, what do you look for even though um, the game might feel it's getting a bit tough for you? What are you still looking for even in this position? Well, the first thing is you, you, you don't make any errors, so you've got to get through, get your skills right so you're not making any errors. And saying that, Shano, is that a try? It looks like a touch call. The referee just had to check with the link there, but it looks like they're going back to for, uh, for a roll ball on the seven. 40 other refs in the background there. <laughs> Talk to me uh, oh. about that, Harley. Putting your hand in between the pass and the ruck. What a what a referee is looking for there. Sometimes you get the call, sometimes you don't. Yeah, it's a very difficult and probably the most difficult part of our game is determining whether a player had had intended to play at the ball or whether it was an accidental contact. And in that situation, it looked like the referee said, "Oh no, the player was going for the touch. We've got a ground, uh, ball to ground." Del Tonga coming on now, bringing their fresh ones on. Some momentum here. Really impressed with Ruhia Tamachi. Showing some fabulous skills. Oh, the ball's still alive. Can they make something from this? Last touch. Having a go, like you said, Pete. Trying anything on that last touch. Yes. Not dying with the ball. Oh, there's a drop ball here. Good pressure by the uh, by Jamie Colossi. They're moving forward. Put pressure on the girl receiving the pass. She must have had a little sneaky look and subsequently lost the ball. Important that Tahodaki here keep their defensive shape, Pete. Oh, what a great pass. pass. Left to right. Yeah, it looked like they didn't get the read right on that defensive set from um, Tahodaki. Um, let's have a look at it again here. So they split back the short side. It looked like a mirror defence there, but uh, the winger was just a little bit late to release out to her man. You'd think she needs to shift now. She needs to shift now. She held up late, and she subsequently left too late. So that's what happens when you, you don't get your timing right on that release. Yeah, they came down the short side, Pete. Common defence on that side is to defend man on man. Get your mirror right on that short side. Unfortunately, that time, uh, Te Hauraki were caught short. Yes, and you need everyone communicating on that side to where the ball is. Oh, What's the referee calling oh, here? Oh, we've got to try it here. That's outstanding agility and footwork in front of the line to make the most of that opportunity. And playing through advantage on that, Harley decided that the player wasn't on side and gave the best advantage you can, which is a touchdown. Yeah, that's right. And it looks like perhaps, you know, Teho Tonga, oh, yeah, hey, oh. we're up a little bit. Let's, you know, let's take our foot off the brake. That's probably something they don't want to get caught doing too much now. Yes, and from a defensive perspective, you need both middles in tight. You know, the, the other middle could have been there. To shut, got back on the line, lifted off the line, so she'd have to, you know, dive and score past it to help her middle mate out. The middles need to be working. Both sides have been a little bit loose in this area. Running that common helmet play. Well done, Murray on that short side, winger to winger. I've been really impressed with um, Claudia Hannum. She seems to always be in a good position on that right wing, and she's always got a safe pair of hands as well. 
To Hodaki good lifting touch. good there, lifting high and strong. Late cut by Vey, well read by Te Hodaki. As Te Hodaki drive it off, that's a great drive. Showing some energy here, two hands, ball down. Great yardage. Turning to Hotunga around. 33 drive. This is a better set. Lovely set, set by Te Hodaki. Running at a retreating defence. Six more. Must have touched in flight there, Harley. Yeah, there was a touch on the ball as it was in flight. And so we've got a recount back to uh, to Hodaki. Another new rule that's coming within the FIT 5th edition rules. If a player accidentally taps instead of roll ball, that's okay. You can just go back and play it again. They won't get the ball taken off them. 33 platform. Cook away to the left side. Fakes to pass, dives under. Nice touch there by Potts. Te Hauraki asking some good questions of Te Hautonga. Crowd building up here in Te Awamutu. Still a couple of spaces left, Farno. Come on down. 32. He throws an out ball. Defence shifted well. Brings back to the centre to reset. Sister on sister there. He has a great dump and split. She actually uh, manipulated oh. that defender. That's Leela Uramia. Much better attack from Te Hauraki. That was a good set play. 8-4 starting to pull some back now. Here's the Indomi replay again. In order for Te Hauraki to come back, they really need some leadership, and I think Rebecca Tamati is starting to step up and, and show what she can do to help lead her team forward. Yeah, from a defensive perspective here, the green needed. Once again, they need to shift. It's on a short side. Dummy half running short side, you need to release and go to your man, which is a common policy. So, yeah, the, they're not quite getting that read right. What's the call you throw out there on defence, Pete, when you want everyone to do that? Well, release. Release is one, certainly one word that we use. Um, I don't know what the, the call is there, but um, you know, it needed to be made. Uh, first thing is with a, with a defensive uh, tactic or policy is that you, 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 know, you, you see something and then you say it and then you action it. Hand over here from Te Hautunga and Te Hauraki will look to bring it off, get a fresh set of players on. Great hands there by Irimia Allen. She's in her first year at university at Laidlaw Theological College, just out of school. If the Hauraki Blue can score again and back up that last try, that'll get, give them some really good confidence. To Hauraki powering through the middle of the field now, showing great energy. Yeah, this Running is into great. retreating defence. Getting great. The Hautung is back. Let's shoot through. She goes. Yes. Great touchdown. Much better play from the Hauraki. They're really on a high. And they need to keep this momentum going. Plenty of talk. No errors on attack. And just making good decisions. Look at this. Speed kills through the middle of that field, Pete. Yeah, well done. She, That's the, Rebecca Tamati there again. Yes. Scoot me through. Look at her. She's got great vision and great skill. She sees it there, sells the dummy. Sights her attacker and throws off a good pass. Well done. Working those two middles, getting two, getting two touches at one time. Now to Hotonga bringing it down the field. It's a little bit slow. They'll be looking to get down to the seven and create something. Halfway through our second half. 8-5 with the Hodaki coming back into the game strongly. They'll be buoyed by that last touchdown. Sweeper play coming. Way to step up. Alicia McCoy stepping up high. Yeah, I'd like to see them look at a short side option as well. They'll be giving it, giving it running open all game. You know, they could almost be ready to change and go that short side now because it is on. All the, all the um, Hodaki defence is shifting over that open side. Irimi Allen passing off. On sweep to Hodaki. Looking to move the ball quickly. Anderson on ball now. Back to a 32 platform. Anderson into dummy half. Comes open side. Hard luck. Looks back to his short side. This will be a handover to Hotongu. who will bring it off their line. What are we looking for there, Pete, on those starts? Well, You're looking for players moving forward? Well, I'll tell you, Shane, at this point in the game, this is where you really need to grit your teeth and do some work. You know, this is where the business starts, is in here, because it starts to get mental now, and you need to work hard, you need to, to drive hard, you need to not make any errors, you need to be communicating to each other. Through that middle third of the field, the trench. 
Potts in the dummy half running. And that'll be the six in handover for Te Hauraki to bring it off the line. Yeah, Vesini, I thought she needed to be make herself more available and sort of fall into space somewhere. She sort of just stood on that spot. You want to be available if you're the dumper and sort of split into some space. Te Hautunga being turned around now at great speed as Te Hauraki drive it through the middle as they come into their rhythm now. Strong through the centre of the field. Yeah, this oh, is nice. Beautiful snaky runs, asking questions. Yeah. Yes. Way to go. Well done to Hodaki coming into their own, showing how strong they're finishing in this last quarter of the game. Well, lads, that's three in a, three in a row for the Hodaki. They are going well. They're back in this game. I think that's 8 6. Coming off the back of some impressive yards through the middle of the field as they drive strongly, gritting their teeth, as you said, Pete. Taking it down the middle of the field, asking questions, creating confusion, and touchdowns. And Charlie Foster, what, what a great lead from the co captain. She's been busy. She's been hard working and she's leading by example. To Hodaki will be looking to defend the set, try and get that turnover and get back into the game. 33 peel. It's a scramble. Oh, the pressure's on to Ho Tonga. They're having a bit of a chip at, the, chip at the referee. The referee's having none of that. Yeah, it looks like the referee called a bobble on the on the roll ball there. We want to make sure that when we're planting the ball that we want to do so correctly and maintaining our control of the ball. Again, to Hodaki carving through the middle of the field with the yard. Snaky runs, asking questions. Long legs. Here comes Irvamir Allen. Big questions and hard luck there from her cousin Leela. And they'll turn over the ball and try and defend this set. To Hotonga bringing it through the middle of the field again. Looking for connections there, looking for some runners. Asking someone to grit their teeth. On comes uh, Elena. He's a little bit disjointed here. That's a better platform now. 32 peel. Good defence. She lifted high at the number 13. Uh, Mary Edomi Allen, well done. What will be happening in the sub box, Pete, in terms of this clock ticking away? What's the manager doing? What the coach? What's the coach doing with this with this clock at the moment? Well, well, certainly to Hodaki Blue will just say, look, just keep on playing how you're playing. They're going so well, they won't want to change anything. It's the Hotonga, uh, the green team, um, who are, who are in the lead, by the way, Peter Mac McIntyre's team. They're the ones that really need to pick it up. They need to pick up their intensity. They need to be talking more because it's a little bit disjointed. How you clean that up is with lots of comms to each Shepherd other. Shepard on the scoop. Looking, looking. She's touched on the line. Ask the questions. Doesn't hand the ball over immediately. Pete, what's that about? Yeah, you've got to ask for the ball to put pressure on them to give it back quickly. Our referees, Harley, right behind the ball as they move side to side down the field. Is that the best position to be able to make your calls? This is the part of the game, honestly, where the lungs start to burn. And you know, oh man, just as much as the players are having to work their hardest, so are the referees. Really important to get the waha going, get the communications out to the players so that we can continue to have a free-flowing game. Yeah, Great drive better. by Vay through the middle of the field. Te Hodaki will be wanting to defend here. Pressure's on. Touched. Great commitment, looking to lose some skin. This is competitive, asking questions of the referee. And a big smile. Well, and that was, it's a that, touchdown. That was an interesting piece of play. It almost looked like she was in front, but she wasn't because the rest are right there, Harley. Yeah, let's have a look at this Indomie replay. This is a very interesting and unique play, not something that you see in every game. Let's see how Highland Potts manages to push the ball back to... Oh, it looks like... Um, uh, they might have just got her hands on the ball in time, according to the referees, so they extend their lead out to 9-6 now. Uh, Harley, can you, do you have to catch the ball to force it down, or can you go same time momentum and it's still a touchdown? What's the rule? Look, the rule states that you do have to have possession before you force the ball down. It looks like the referees were comfortable with that in that situation. Great, Great questions being asked of the players of the referee, asking those questions. They're the sole judge of whether it's a touchdown or not. Yeah, and we mentioned before, fatigue sets in. Really important that we make those good decisions right at the crucial parts of the game, too. Oh, oh looks like we've got to try. Wow, what a quick reply from Tahoraki. Ladies putting their bodies on the line here in Te Aumutu. There's dirt flying everywhere. Yeah, the Tahoe Tonga middle was way infield. She comes over now out of sight. 
It comes in hard, and the other a saver comes in just a little bit late. You're looking for that V line up there, Pete. Someone to take your inside back, take their line, and get back up. Yes, you you do. If you're pulling straight, and the ball's going away from you. It's too hard to get across. You got to run on the V line towards where the ball is. Well, we just missed out of that last try as well. Jamie Colossi made the touch, but the referee actually said play on because she was still in front of the line and offside. So the advantage came back to Tahodaki for that try. Two minutes to go in the 2022 Bunnings Home Ground Touch Series and the Women's Series. If the next two games are anything like this, we're in for a cracker. Oh, it looks like we've got a penalty for a forward pass. Just that last pass that went to Claudia Hannon was just called forward by the referees again. Teamwork there to make the right decision. Subbing off the field, Harley. Are you allowed to come through the ruck, in front of the ruck to sub off? It's very much so discouraged. If a player is on the attacking team and wanting to substitute, we want them to go in behind the ball and in behind the, their attacking players. Yeah. You see there the Te Hauraki, uh, winger was dummy half for all those first three touches, and that's a common um, common tactic with teams, just keeping the uh, subside winger as the dummy half. Nice, strong touch there, getting a turnover. Te Hautonga trying to bring it off the field now. They'll be wanting to wind the clock down. Pete, the last minute and 50 seconds, what are you doing when you're in the box with your team as a coach now? What should you be saying or looking at? Well, it's all the basics of that, that happens, Shona. Getting down the other end, not making an errors and putting on a line attack play. Down your end, defending the line, plenty of talk. What's your manager doing in terms of communicating with you as a coach, Pete, with their stopwatches? Well, she, yeah, she, she's giving you the time frames. Normally calling, you know, every 30 second and every 10 second as we get down. Um, obviously, there's a two-point lead here, so if it was a little bit closer, and, and you can still score two. Oh, skills back and forward, back and forward. Looks what? like we had some more Highland Pots and magic there. She's going to be again. given. Yeah, a lot of appeals from both teams. Important touchdown there for Te Hautonga, taking it to 10-7. That was um, Kaidurangi Edmonds who scored that. There she is there. She passes in. Gets a pass back, dives, and gets it down before the winger makes the touch. Looks like they had three players in on that short side, Pete. To Hodaki were found a little bit short. Yep. Okay, 10 7 now, so they've got this game wrapped up. Uh, to Hotonga. Still working hard. To Hodaki always still wanting to get another, another try here. To Hodaki have done so well to come back into this game. It promises to be a cracking second test between these two teams. Oh, oh, beautiful skills drawing the player. What a great line. Oh, beautiful well line by Imogen. And an extra, give her an extra touchdown for the smile. It was a great line there. Looking. Comes in on that chop line. Winger didn't reach out enough to make the touch. And she scores the try. And that is the end of game one in the 2022 Bunnings Home t Homegrown Touch Series. Final score 10-8 to Te Hautunga over Te Hauraki. Pete, any final thoughts on that game? Oh, yeah, what a great game. And we saw Te Hauraki, they were down by three or four, Shana. They came back, they scored three in a row, got back into the game. Um, the experience of um, Te Hautunga obviously, uh, you know, came, came through. Came through and they had some key performers that, uh, that played really well. And I'm talking about the likes of Ruhia Tamati, Highland Potts, Jamie Colossi. Um, Elena Edemir, yeah, and um, and Kaidurangi had a Edmonds had a really good second half as well, Shana. Well done to both teams, both coaches, and a mihi kawana kia koto e fakarongo mai ana e chichiro mai ana kite nei fakatata i te nei ra na re ra te na koto. We'll see you soon for the next game as we take you to a break. Yeah, Shana. And We're going up to um, see Jenny and surprise her with her $5,000 prize. Let's go. Jenny, congratulations. You're a Bunnings home ground hero. I'm pretty overwhelmed, I guess, still. I'm pretty honored and humbled to be a Bunnings home ground hero. We're trying to create a bit of a legacy for our touch fino and just see all the people out there having so much fun and enjoying the sport we love. That makes all the work that we put in really worth it. Okay, uh, we're going up to Harley Wall here. He's going to—he's out there with the mic. And he's going to be doing some interviews. Harley, are you there? Oh no, they're just—I uh, think he's waiting for the team. They're just in a huddle now, um, saying their cheers and saying their thanks and acknowledging each other here. So, uh, and what a great game it was, people! Ten eight to Te Hautonga.
It was a great comeback we talked about from Te Hauraki in that middle, uh, middle third there, that middle part of the game where they came back in the second half. Such a good comeback, but the, um, the um, experience of the Hotang, I thought, came through. And obviously, uh, good, good, good coaching out there from both teams. Harley will be just waiting for them to finish, and then he'll uh, probably pull away the winning captain, I'm expecting, and have a few words with them. Um, just while we have a bit of time, we'd like to acknowledge our sponsors, Indomi and obviously Bunnings. Great sponsorship for Touch New Zealand. Very thankful for the sponsorship at hand. Okay, we're handing over to Harley right now. We've got, we got 10 minutes. Kia ora whanau, the 2002 Bunnings Homegrown Series, fueled by Indomi. We're here with our captain from the winning side, uh, Te Hau Tonga. Uh, congratulations, Jamie Clossi. First of all, what was the key to, to success today? Um, the first game coming in, we're just really hoping to find our connections and just get our legs going for the next two games. So, yeah, thank you. Second half to Hodaki made a bit of a comeback. What was the key to trying to slow that down? The mix is up next. I think we just need to get our right side of our D working on their box. I think we're a little bit flustered and a little bit confused, but once we get that sorted, I think we can have that. Sorry, An awesome opportunity here for the homegrown right. series. What does this it's opportunity right. mean to you? It's, it's so right. cool being able to play good quality touch with heaps of new girls. So that's really cool. And just yeah, being able to get some games under our belt. Cool. Two more games there. What's going to be the focus for this afternoon's game? Um, hopefully we'll sort out our D. Awesome. All the best for the next game. We're going to cross back to Shane Owen Pete. Looking forward to the next game. Okay, thank you, Harley, and thank you, Jamie, the captain of the Tonga team. Uh, Etiwi, thank you for listening in on that. There was a great first up game. We really look forward to the open mixed team coming up next. Um, some exciting players in there. And once again, like this first game, so many of our youth players coming through in our systems, whether it be 16s, 18s, and 20s, a lot of young talent. We're looking to nurture through to the next series of upcoming youth trans Tasmans, upcoming open trans Tasmans, and ultimately the World Cup in two years' time. Um, we've just got Harley back. Harley, thanks for that. And it's been great having Harley and, um, and, and Shane here in commentary. Um, we're going to carry on with the same team for the next one. Thank you very much. Over and out.